At least 50 dead, 53 others wounded in the worst mass shooting in modern American history, an attack the president says on all of us. You know enough to say that this was an act of terror and an act of hate. This is the face of that hate. A 29-year-old American Muslim who opened fire inside a gay nightclub in Orlando. There's blood splattering. I didn't know if it was mine or somebody else's. The killer called 911 to pledge allegiance to ISIS before emptying his assault rifle on a crowd of hundreds. Today we're dealing with something that we never imagined and is unimaginable. As the nation comes to grips with the horror, flags fly at half staff at the White House and across the country. And there is more evidence of a link to terrorism. Good evening to you. I'm Deidre Dukes. And I'm Russ Spencer. In tonight for Doug Evans. U.S. officials say the killer mentioned the Boston Marathon bombing during that 911 call made from inside the Orlando nightclub. The carnage is beyond description, and some of the victims are still fighting for their lives tonight. My shirt soaked between sweat and blood. All this is just it's devastating. Wielding an assault-type rifle and a handgun, a gunman opens fire inside a crowded gay nightclub early Sunday, killing at least 50 people and wounding dozens more. The deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. The gunman, identified as 29-year-old Omar Mateen, exchanged gunfire with a uniformed police officer around 2 a.m. From there, Mateen entered the venue and began shooting. Multiple agencies and a SWAT team responded. It quickly turned into a hostage situation. After exchanging gunfire with police, Mateen was shot dead by an officer. The gunshots, they just, it sounded like it was part of the mix for the DJ. And just after a couple of days, people just started to run and scream. FBI officials confirming the gunman called 911 shortly before the attack and referenced ISIS. There were 911 calls in which there was conversation between the subject and uh, law enforcement representatives of 911 dispatchers. Uh, that has become federal evidence. It was, it was, uh, as my, it's my understanding, I have not personally listened to him, but it was general to the Islamic State. President Obama calling the shooting an act of terror and an act of hate, targeting a place of solidarity and empowerment for gays and lesbians. Attacks on any American, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation, is an attack on all of us. No act of hate or terror will ever change who we are. Authorities are looking into whether the attack was an act of domestic or international terror and if the shooter acted alone. The ATF reporting Mateen legally purchased at least two firearms within the past week or so. The FBI says Mateen was a U.S. citizen employed by the security company G4S and was not under surveillance. The agency did investigate him on two separate occasions, in 2013, after he reportedly made inflammatory comments to co-workers, and again in 2014, after authorities discovered he had ties to an American suicide bomber, but ultimately determined he did not pose a threat at the time. Those interviews turned out to be inconclusive, so there was nothing to keep the investigation going forward. Uh, we are hearing tonight from the father of the man named as the shooter by law enforcement. Siddiqui Mateen says he's in shock and was not aware of his son's plans. The father told one media outlet that Mateen got angry when he saw two men kissing in Miami a few months ago and says that may have prompted the killing spree. Siddiqui Mateen says, quote, we are saying we're apologizing for the whole incident. We are in shock like the whole country. Uh, he claims the shooting has nothing to do with religion despite reports that the father supports the Afghan Taliban. And take a look at the line of people at a blood donation center in Orlando. They're all there to help the victims of the nightclub shooting. Now, medical officials say these donations are greatly needed. Many in line say they feel it's the least they can do to help the victims. And it's amazing all the other people that can or won't wait in line are showing up with food and, right. and, and drinks. And it's just, you know, it's, it's horrible that a tragedy like this happens, but it's heartwarming to see all the support of the community. That's an outpouring of love there. Red Cross volunteers here in Metro Atlanta are supporting emergency responders with uh, water and food. Uh, the Red Cross says while it doesn't typically serve hospitals in the Orlando area, uh, the Red Cross is providing a small number of blood products to support Florida hospitals in response to the shooting. And it's also standing by to provide additional blood if necessary. If you would like to help, we have a link on our website at fox5atlanta.com with information from the Red Cross about what you can do.
Now, here in Atlanta, people have already started to come together to honor the victims of the shooting, some donating blood, others organizing vigils for those who were killed and injured. And Fox 5's Claire Sims is live in Midtown, where people will gather by candlelight later this evening. Claire? Yeah, Deidre, we're live right outside the restaurant here at 10th and Piedmont, an intersection largely believed to be the center of Atlanta's LGBT community. And tonight, really in just a few hours, people are going to gather in this parking lot for that candlelight vigil. But that's not the only way people here in Atlanta are responding. As an LGBT community, frankly, it has come as a real shock to us. Um, this, this sort of violence, I, frankly, is, is something that we have never seen on this scale in the past. Jeff Graham says he woke up to the news alerts on his phone. 20, then 50 confirmed dead in the mass shooting at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. But there are so many lives that have been lost and so many people that have been injured by this. As executive director of Georgia Equality, Graham says the news quickly turned to a call for action with people in Metro Atlanta mobilizing to help in any way they can. Graham suggests the best way to respond is to visit the Facebook page for Equality Florida. The organization has set up a GoFundMe page to support the victims of the shooting and has updated information about blood drives. The Center Orlando, an LGBT empowerment group, also providing support to those impacted and their families. But perhaps the most important thing, Graham believes, is for people to reflect on their own daily lives and how they treat others. If people can just look within their hearts um, to try to have a bit more respectful dialogue, especially when it does come to differences. Um, and, I, and I hope that we can take a time to, to really try to come together as a community and not just the LGBT community and our allies, but as a broader community of people who just say this sort of violence against anyone is wrong. Graham says that his organization is partnering with several other groups to hold a similar event Tuesday night at the Center for Civil and Human Rights downtown. In the meantime, tonight's vigil, that will be held around 8.45 p.m. And, uh, of course, anyone is welcome to attend. We will have live updates on that tonight on Fox 5 News at 10 and 11. For now, we are live in Midtown. Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. So many touched by this tragedy. Thank you, Claire. Well, the Islamic Society of Central Florida is condemning the massacre. Islamic leader Imam Mohammed Mursi is urging anyone with information to come forward. One of the officers, as we heard, was injured. Um, and that's a risk they take every day to protect us. No one could have predicted this. No one could have prepared for it. This could have happened anywhere. It's like a lightning. Well, families seeking information about loved ones who might have been victims of the shooting can call two numbers, 404-246-4357, again, 404-246-4357, or 1-800-CALL-FBI. That's 1-800-225-5325, and names are starting to be released. And again, this senseless attack in Orlando is now the deadliest mass shooting in our nation's history and the worst terror attack since 9-11. Uh, there are at least 50 dead in Orlando, with that number expected to rise. Here's a look at the number of deaths in other mass shootings. There were 32 victims at Virginia Tech in 2007, 27 at Sandy Hook in 2012, and the San Bernardino attack last December killed 14 people. And with authorities across the country on alert after the deadly nightclub shooting, a man is arrested in Hollywood this afternoon just before the city's gay pride parade was scheduled to take place. Now, authorities say the suspect was heavily armed with explosive materials found inside his car. Investigators say neighbors called police after that man was spotted knocking on doors and, doors and loitering in the area. A Santa Monica police say there is no known connection between the suspect's arrest and the Orlando, Florida nightclub shooting. And we have video of the White House flag being lowered to half staff. You see it there. President Obama gave the order to lower the flag in honor of the victims of the Orlando shooting. Our coverage of the tragedy in Orlando is just beginning tonight. We have an entire section of our website dedicated to the shooting. Uh, just ahead, over to fox5atlanta.com for all the latest information, including names of some of the victims. You'll also find the latest on the Fox 5 Atlanta app. And also here at home, people are rushing to donate blood to help those shooting victims. I'm Marissa Mitchell, and I'll tell you how you can assist coming up.